So we're going to take just a little bit of time and talk about zero force members. Um, the nice thing about zero force members is if you can identify them in advance, then you save time by not having to do all the calculations to find them. But basically the idea is that you have something in the system that actually doesn't have any load on it at all. And you can actually do it just by looking at it. And you're like, well, why would we do that? Because, I mean, why would you bother putting a something in a structure if it doesn't have any load? And it's just basically that in the real world, these are included for stability. You specifically would have them in there because they make the system more stable in case you have a load that you don't expect, then they would take a load, but that maybe in like ideal conditions, they wouldn't. So if we kind of look at an example that we've looked at previously, if we have a um, like a little truss, we had a truss before that kind of looked like this and like this and like this, and it was on a pin here and it was on a roller here. Oh, it's funny. Um, it was on a roller there. Now before we had the force up here, but now let's say that we put the force down here. So um, we've got a 500 Newton force down here. Um, even if I, I don't, you're not going to need these, but even if I drew them in, we still have these as two meters and two meters. Okay, but I'm going to erase them because they're really not going to come into play at all. Um, but we still have these joints, so we're still going to call them B, A, and C. Now we still have, um, again, since this is a, a pin, we still have these two external forces and we have this external force, um, reaction force, so I'll call that C. Oops, come back. You like to jump, you're very jumpy today. We have C and um, <laughs> AY, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> we have C, A, Y, come here, and then A, X, okay? Now, if you just look at joint B, I'll do it a little bit stronger. Um, I can already tell you looking at this that both AB and BC are zero force members. But let's go ahead and look at joint B and I can prove it to you. And actually one of the reasons I deleted the, um, what do you call those things, dimensions, is you don't even really need them. So if you look at joint B and if we were gonna draw everything in tension like we normally do, it doesn't even matter what this angle here is, so I'm just gonna put it as some random angle theta. Now, originally we had it as like 45 degrees or something like that, but this was TAB and this was tension BC. Okay, now check this out. If I do a sum of the forces in the X direction, okay, then if I break my TBC out in its two components, right, I've got a component in the, this direction and a component in this direction, all right? So the X1 is going to be TBC times the, what would it be, um, opposite of sine, sine of theta. That's the only one in the X direction, and it's equal to zero, okay? So for TBC sine, zero, sine theta to be zero, and we're assuming that theta is not equal to zero, even if it's equal to um, whatever you call it. Let's also assume that theta is not equal to um, 180 degrees. Okay, so we'll assume that it's not, uh, that theta is not pushing this way and it's not going up this way. Okay, it's, it's kind of cattywampus. It's off to some random angle. Um, then that means that TBC itself has to be equal to zero. Okay, and then if we do the sum of the forces in the Y, <laughs> Stop it. I feel like my computer is messing with me. We want to do the sum of the forces in the y direction. Um, all right, we have negative. <laughs> Why aren't you typing? I hate this. <laughs> there we go. Um, we have negative TAB and then the BC component, which would be um, so, uh, cosine. Gosh, come here. <laughs> minus uh, TBC cosine theta has to be equal zero. Now, regardless of what cosine is at this point, I've already shown that TBC has to be zero, which now that means that TAB has to be zero. So that actually means that both AB and BC are zero force members. Okay, I can't spell, um, members. All right, so the basic rule um, here is that anytime you have two members that come together and they're not collinear, so that's what I was saying with the 
theta not equal to 180 or zero, as long as they're not collinear, as long as there's no external forces on the joint, then they're both zero force members. So in a previous example, A, B, and B, C were not zero force members, but that's because this force was right here. Come here, come on, you're supposed to play along. There we go, <laughs> that's not what I wanted to play along. Ah, okay, let's try this one more time. Derp, 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 derp. I ate way too many Skittles before recording this video. Okay, so this force in the previous example was here. So in this case, if this force is here, then this force is here, which means when you do the sum of the forces in the X, it's not gonna come out, you know, you're gonna have this 500 floating around in here, it's not gonna be zero. So um, that basically means that if you do have an external force, then all bets are off. But if you have, like we have now, where this force was down here, then there was nothing else going on. It was just those two forces. And since there's nothing else going on externally, um, then those two have to be zero. Now, just so you know, um, A, Y, and A, C in this case, those count as external forces. You can't be like, well, B, C and A, C come together and those no external forces. No, those are external. Those are the contact forces. Those count as external forces. Um, but if you don't have any, like here, there's no contact forces, there's no other forces going on. So that means that A, B, and B, C have to be zero force members. Now, even if you're like, well, what if that one wasn't pointing straight down? I can kind of show you that like, let's say that, you know, we had a force going this way and we had some other force going this way. So this is, let's pretend this is another, another joint. Um, and you'd be like, well, you know, this one is some theta and this one is some phi and whatever, and that's fine. But um, they're still both gonna be zero force members what I can do is I can just draw my X and my Y axes different. And I can just call this X and, yeah, that would be X, come on girl, X and Y. So if I'm doing that, then um, again, I can call this some random angle chimichanga. I don't know how to draw chimichanga. Um, what's another, come on girl, psi, there we go. So I can, we'll call this force two. You know, I can say, well, the sum of the forces in the X direction is gonna be force two cosine psi and psi is clearly not um, zero or 180, so therefore force two has to be zero, and therefore force one also has to be zero. So it's not that, well, one of them has to line up with an axis perfectly because you can just redraw your axes however you want. So basically the idea is you have two, force, two joints coming together, two members coming together at a joint, and there's no other external forces on it. Unless they are perfectly lined up, both of those are zero force members. Now they're probably there for a reason, um, but in our case, like from a statics perspective, they have no load on them. There's one more example of zero force members that I can show you. And um, let's try that. All right, so let's say we have some picture that looks kind of like this. My picture is amazing. So we have, um, it's got a pin at A. So that means we can go ahead and we can draw in AX and AY. AX and AY. And it's got a roller at E. So I can go ahead and just draw the one force at E. All right, and say that we are trying to figure out um, what all the forces are in all these various members. So now here, we have an external force at B, so we can't say that A, B, and B, C are zero force members because there's an external force, so we can't get rid of those. However, we can do a little bit of work and you'll soon discover that in fact, we have several other zero force members in here. So one of the, remember said, so the rule that we had before is if you have two come together and they, have an and they don't have an external force, then they're both zero force members. So I'm gonna show you one other example where you can have a zero force member. So let's start off by looking at joint C. And I haven't put in any um, specific lengths or anything like that. I've just given you the angle that one of these angles is a right angle. And this other one, I've just given you some random theta. Um, but aside from that, that's all you really need to solve this problem or to at least identify the zero force members. So if you look at joint C, all right, so we're gonna draw everything in tension. So we have this one coming up here, that's tension B to C, and we have tension C to D, and they're all aligned, tension C to D, and then we have tension A to C, and that's at a right angle, because I said so, tension C, A to C. Okay, now, just like I said in the previously, I can draw my axes any direction that I want. So yeah, I mean, I could draw them like this, but then I'd have to do all kinds of work and work is dumb and I'm lazy. It's amazing. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw in an axis 
going this direction and an axis going this direction. I'll call this one X and this one Y. So now if I do the sum of the forces in the Y direction, I get negative TAC, but there's nothing else in that direction. So that means it has to be zero. So TAC is zero. Yay! Now, unfortunately, if I do the sum of the forces in the X, I get TBC, negative TBC, plus TCD is equal to zero. So neither of those are zero force members, but they are equal to each other. So I'm going to say not, make sure you can see that right, not zero force. So those aren't zero force members, but they are equal to each other, um, but they're not zero. They're not equal to zero. But this one here, um, I'm going to draw this. This one here, this one is a zero force member because there's nothing to um, break away from it. There's nothing to, um, to counteract it in the y direction. Therefore, it has to be a zero force member. All right? So um, really what I could do is if I was going to redraw this, I could redraw this without that one at all because for the purpose of statics, that thing isn't doing anything at all. I can just totally get rid of it. It's a zero force member. All right. So that one is maybe a little bit easier to see because it's at a 90 degree angle, but let's look at the one that's not at a 90 degree angle. So let's look at joint D. Okay. So if we look at joint D, again, we have um, the tension CD and the tension DE. Tension CD, tension DE. And then we have this tension AD going off this way at some angle theta. Now, um, again, we know for sure that, well, not for sure, but this one's non-zero, okay, because we just showed that, um, and, and that's fine. But again, all right, ah, go back. <laughs> so we can go ahead and we're going to go ahead and draw our axes in however we want, and I'm going to draw mine to be collinear here, and so keep moving, and this one here. So we have Y and we have X, okay? So um, again, if I want to do the sum of the forces in the y direction, now maybe it was a little bit easier to see with the other one because it was all along the y, but even here, all right, I've got TAD times the opposite, so that's sine of theta is equal to zero. And again, as long as theta is not equal to zero or 180 degrees, that means that TAD has to be equal to zero. And again, some of the forces in the X, we're going to have the same thing as before, negative TCD plus TDE, and then minus TAD cosine theta. But again, TAD is zero, so that means that TDC and TDE have to be equal. So these are, are not zero force. They're not zero force but TAD is zero force. So again, I could come in here if I wanted to and I could totally get rid of TAD because there's no forces in there at all. Okay, so this is kind of cool and let me, let me kind of summarize the, the rule for you. But yeah, just, just to make sure you're clear, now what I could do is if I wanted to redraw this and make it a little less intimidating, I could just come in here and I can erase these and now looking at this problem, this for some reason just seems like a lot less of an intimidating problem to solve than the previous one. Um, but I can literally, once I identify all the zero force members, I can just redraw it without those members and then it's just a lot easier to solve. So I'll put those back in there for you. All right, so here's the, the basic rule. So here's the basic rule is if you have two collinear members, so just you know two things coming in like this, two collinear members, and then you have a third member that's going off cattywampus, so just at any other, just one of them, but it could be going off at any other location as long as it's not aligned. That's not cattywampus, that's totally appropriate and dignified. So if you have a completely undignified member going off some random direction, and again, there are no other external forces going on, because again, that would mess everything up, then this cattywampus one here is a zero force member. So these are the, the other two we want to keep. So these are, these are good. I'm going to make them green because they're good. Um, you want to keep these, but um, this one that you have here, that's your zero force member. 
and you can get rid of it. So again, your, your two ways that you're going to identify zero force members is if you have two things coming together and they're not lined up and there's no external forces, these are both gone. So both bad. Or if you have something, keep moving. <laughs> Sorry, I'm wine now. If you have them coming together in a collinear way, and then you have something coming off cattywampus, so just the cattywampus one is bad. So this one is bad, but these are still good. You want to keep these. All right. So those are your zero force members. Those do help you kind of save a little bit of time whenever you're going to do a structural analysis. It's kind of fun.